Do you need to balance your Nissan Leaf battery, but you're afraid to ask? Don't try that. I have better ways to balance your Nissan Leaf battery. In my last video, I showed you how I built a complete off-grid solar system for my minivan. I used a Nissan Leaf battery pack for my system. And there are a lot of comments and questions about how to balance this battery pack. After all, this is just another lithium-ion battery pack and every individual cell needs to be balanced. Or the entire battery pack will be ruined. So in this video, I will show how I balance my Nissan Leaf battery pack by using two methods. Number one is to use a good old parallel connection. And number two is by using a balance structure like a Tonichi AccuCell 6. I'll also explain why it's a bad idea to use a BMS for this battery pack. Let's get started. So I have quite a few comments and questions asking me why I don't have a BMS, aka battery management system for this battery pack. If you follow my channel, you probably realize I'm not a big fan of using BMS for my lithium-ion batteries. I've made quite a few batteries, and in fact, almost every single device I have, the first thing I do is to rip out the original battery and install a couple of 18650s in there. I've got from an LED lantern to iPhone, multimeter to an e-bike battery. None of them have a BMS, except for the ones that already have a BMS like this 10 amp hour cobalt power tool battery that I use for my e-bike or this 6 amp hour or 4 amp hour. This Nissan Leaf battery is no exception. Not only does it not need a BMS, it is also a very bad idea to install a BMS on this battery pack if you don't know what you're doing. So first let me show you why this thing does not even need to have a BMS. I've used this battery pack for a few camping trips and I've run through about 20 charge and discharge cycles. This is a 10S battery pack and the maximum charging voltage is 4.1 volt per cell or 41 volts for the entire 10S battery pack. I charged the battery using a boost converter at 41 volt DC without any balancing. And now let's check every individual cell and see if they're balanced or not. So every single module here is a 2S2P configuration and they are connected in series via this connector right here. So this middle point is the series connection. So from here to here is one cell. From here to here is the second cell and so on. So 3.96 volts, 3.96. So this pack, the first one is balanced. Check on this one here, 397, 396, so that is very close, very close, next one, 396, 396, exactly the same. 396, 396, 397, 397. So as you can see, every single cell is almost identical. And it seems like this whole pack just magically balances itself, even though I don't even have a BMS. The only thing I have is this. Well, that's pretty amazing. Now let's talk about the BMS or battery management system. My battery is 10S and it requires to be charged at 41 volts or 4.1 volt per cell and no more. I've looked around on the internet and mostly eBay. I found a lot of 10S BMS on the market and almost all of them would charge the battery at 42 volts or 4.2 volts per cell. That's a bit over voltage for the Nissan Leaf battery and it will damage the battery in a very short amount of time. I also looked at some advanced and more expensive BMS. Those are called smart BMS. You can use your phone and connect to the BMS via Bluetooth and it will give you full control of the charging parameters. The only problem is that it's quite expensive. I'm not sure if I'm willing to pay for over $100 just for a BMS that I don't even know if it would work for my battery pack or not. 
One more funny thing about this BMS is that it claims to have a discharge rate of 300 amps. If you take a look at the BMS wires, they are quite thin. I'd say they are about size 12 or so. And that can run around 20 to 25 amp max continuous. In order to run this for over 300 amps, you need a wire size 350. That's even bigger than your garden water hose. That's impossible. I'd say this BMS would provide about 30 amp to 40 amp max continuous. So next I'm going to show you a couple of ways you can balance just these Nissan Leaf battery modules. The very first way to do a good old parallel method. What you do is you connect all of the battery modules in parallel by connecting all the positive terminals together, all of the negative terminals together, and all of the series connection together. And before you do this, uh, all of the battery modules have to have the same voltage. They don't have to be exactly the same voltage because then you don't need to balance them, right? But you know, similar voltage, once they are connected, just leave them like this for a few hours and they will eventually balance themselves and you will end up with all of them having the exact same voltage. The advantage of this method is that it's easy to do and without investing in a balance charger or anything like that. The disadvantage is that in this case I have a 10S battery pack here which is in series connection. In order to put them in parallel I have to disassemble the entire pack and put them in parallel. And then after they are balanced, I have to put them back in series and that's a pain in the butt. And that's where this comes in. You can just use a regular balance charger to charge a Nissan Leaf battery. There are three different lithium battery types on this charger. It will charge LiPo battery at 4.2 volts, lithium iron phosphate battery at 3.6 volts and lithium ion batteries at 4.1 volts. And this lithium ion battery option is the one that I'm going to use to charge my Nissan Leaf battery. So this battery pack is a 10S battery pack. And the problem with this charger is that it can only do up to 6S. So the most I can do with this charger is only 6 in series. I have other charger, but the most it can do is also up to 8S, not 10S. And a 10S charger is very hard to find. And even if you can find it, it's very expensive. Anyway, so I'm going to divide my battery into two sections, a 6S and a 4S. And I'm going to use two balance chargers to charge it. So the top two modules will be 4S and the bottom three modules will be 6S. So the 4S pack is composed of the top two modules in which the negative terminal here and the positive terminal is here. I have installed the main cable with an XT60 connector on the main terminals. And because it's a 4S pack, I need a balance cable that has five pins. So hold your balance connector this way upright like this, okay? The cable on the far right is the ground cable, which is gonna go to the ground or the very negative terminal of the 4S pack. The next three subsequent cables are going to go to the series connection on the 4S pack. So on this pack, the series connections are here, here, and here. So the next cable on the balance connector, which is the yellow cable on this connector, is going to go to right here on the battery. The next cable, the green cable, is going to go right here. Okay, that's the next series connection. And the blue cable on this connector is going to go right here. That's the next series connection. Okay, and the last cable, which is the, uh, the white cable on this connector, is going to go to the positive terminal of the 4S pack. And that is it. So for the 6S pack, it is the bottom three modules in which the negative terminal is here and positive terminal is here. I got the main cable here with the XT60 connector. So this is gonna go right here and this is gonna go right there. That is for the main charging cable. So this is the balance cable for the 6S pack. It's got seven pins. And if you hold the connector like this upright, the Cable on the right side, on the very right side, is going to go to the ground of the 6S pack, which is right here. 
the table on the very left is going to go to the positive terminal of the 6 aspect which is right here and the rest of the cable going from right to left are going to go to the subsequent series connection on the 6 aspect which is here 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 and here so in this case the green cable is going to go to right here the orange cable here yellow cable right here white cable right here or here same thing red cable right here and that is pretty much it and because the 4S and 6S battery packs are also connected together in series if you use two balance chargers to charge them at the same time you have to make sure the chargers are from different circuits or at least have isolated grounds otherwise the charger will short out because of this connection alright so I've got everything ready to go got the cables for the 6S all tucked in nice and neat it goes out to my 6S charger balance charger and for the 4S the wires go down to my 4S balance charger here here we go Because I don't have a BMS, I need to find a way to monitor the voltage of my battery. So I'm going to use a voltage meter like this one here. It can monitor voltage of a battery range from 1 to 100 volts. The advantage of using this is that it's small and it's easy to install and it consumes very little power. But the disadvantage is that it only shows you the total voltage of the entire battery pack it doesn't show you the individual battery pack. This voltage monitor will let you see individual cell of the entire battery pack and it's called voltage tester and buzzer alarm. So it's got a speaker here and it will sound the alarm when the battery is low enough and you can program the alarm set range from 2.7 to 3.8 volts this is also very easy to use plus is on this side and minus is on this side and all you have to do is to plug in your balance cable that's it alright let's plug it in this is the 6S Twenty-three point eight. Oh, that's 6S we show you individual cells number 4 4.01 volt number 5 396, number 6, 394, or 23.8. Right, now let's plug in the 4S. 15.9 total, number 2, 396. So number 4, 402, or 15.9. It's very easy to use. And like I said before, this battery pack seems to balance itself without me having to do anything at all. So I would only have to do this balance charging once in a while or whenever the battery pack is out of balance, which might take a long time. If after 20 charge and this charge cycles, it is still balanced, then it will indeed take a very long time before I have to balance charge the battery.